Free stalls. They're no good if the cow's shitting them. When I go to a free stall barn, the first thing I look at is how many cow pies are in the stalls. It's more than 5%, something's wrong. We gotta design them right, make sure everything's right. I'm excited about what's ahead for Australia because I'm starting to see the damn leak. When I was here the last several times, not a single soul mentioned free stalls. Every meeting I've been at, two to five dairies want to build free stalls right now. Once that gate flip breaks open, it's going to be amazing to change in Australia. I was asked to be keynote speaker at the Larry Farm Show in California about 10 years ago. And my topic was free stalls. Had about 15 people there. Afterwards, everybody politely said, Dr. Johnson, you don't understand, this is California, we'll never have free stalls. Five years later, I gave the same talk, standing room only. Now do you realize 75% of the cows in California are in free stalls? Because dry lots don't work anymore. We want to milk too many cows. We've got too many cows per square inch. So again, you don't have to do free stalls, but it's something you have to think about. People are asking the right question. Is it time for change? Change is already happening, whether you want it to or not. Free stalls are coming. They're coming fast. They're already here. More and more are being designed. <coughs> you know, I could have done a two-hour presentation this morning just on free stalls. I've designed over 250,000 free stalls all over the world. The one thing I know, if you do them right, I can sleep at night. I don't have one hesitation that you'll be happy if you go do them right. I think how hard it is for me as a consultant when I go with Gary to just spend you know, one of the areas just spent $45 million building a new freestyle facility. And I told them, it, we figured out it's going to cost them $1.2 million to fix it. No one was happy. But again, it could have been avoided. Freestyle is what's best for the cow. Don't forget that first. Weather influences are reduced. At least double the feed put. You guys can get twice as much feed for the same number of acres of land. So it tells me one thing. You can feed twice as many cows. No, twice as many cows on the same land. What does that do to your bottom line? Pretty easy. And I've had dairy my country says you're wrong at the half. It's more than half. <coughs> so again, think about these things. Design them right or don't build them. What scares me is if you get advice somebody's never built, a, uh, doesn't know anything about a free cell bar, but read it in a book, that's not a good thing. Work with people that have been over the states. Work with people that know what free stalls are. There's people here that know they, they've got them, they use them. Think about who's going to help you get this accomplished. Cow's needs always come first. You know, there's all sorts of things to think about. Head to head, tail to tail. I can list a dozen reasons why I'd go tail to tail, but what do you see almost everywhere? Head to head. But do you realize tail to tail, every cow's got to walk by water. Isn't water what makes milk? If you got tail to tail, you get more free stalls and the same building costs. If you get behind, the cows can be at the lockups and you can bed stalls. You can go over by moxies and you can look at a uh, boat. So again, not one thing is right for everything. It's a lifetime investment, so do it correctly. You know, go to my website, theotherdoctor.com. I forgot to put the in front of that. Theotherdoctor.com, and I have a freestyle guidelines on there. Look at it. Something to think about. You know, when we start cutting corners, so we're going to try and control costs. Narrow alleys means more manure on the floor, which means more manure splashing on the legs and under. Most people don't realize 70% of the manure is in the feed line. 30% is in the cow alley. So we have head-to-head -head cows that are in the feed alley that turn around going to stalls carry a lot more manure in the stalls than cows that are in the back alley. You know, here's a farm. This is a head-to-head. -head. Look at how little manure after 12 hours is in this alley. You can actually see the lines in the floor. This is the same barn, but this is a feed alley. Looks a lot different, doesn't it? 70% of manure or more is in this alley. So we got to be careful. And the narrower we make them, the more manure that's there. That's why we want to make sure we make them right. Because is this what we want? We want cows walking around splashing manure on their others? No. 
Have the correct tree stall loop is a very important thing. Cows have to have lunge space, whether they're on pasture or pack or in a free stall. If they can't get up naturally, they're in trouble. They will get hurt. If they don't have lunge space, they will get injured. Cows need to lay straight in the stall so we don't have to work taking the manure out of the stalls. But what does every cow in the world do the same thing? She throws her weight forward, picks up her back leg, and gets up. Doesn't matter if she's on pasture or in a free stall. <coughs> you put them in a free stall, they can't do that anymore. The only thing that'll happen is injury. So think about the cow. This is a free stall loop. I only made one mistake on this. I didn't patent it. This is the number one used free stall loop in the world, and that's the one I designed. And we have several things that are important. This is wide, so this is low, so the cows can lunge over the top of it if they want to lunge to the side. Most people don't realize. Two out of three cows are, would rather lunge to the side than straight ahead. But we're smarter than they are. We're going to make them lunge straight ahead. Why would we want to do that? So again, having, and then the other thing, you notice how far this comes out straight? That's what determines whether the cow's going to lay straight in the stall or not. So do it right or don't do it. You know, what we want to do is give that cow the ability to lunge forward, lunge to the right, lunge to the left. Let her do it her way. Bigger stalls are not always better stalls. Now the new thing is make great big free stalls. And I said that's good because then cows can crap all over. Then you spend all that money, you got all this mastitis, and you go, wow, this put me out of business. Bedding type is critical. Yes, sand is the best. We have mattresses, we have sawdust, we have solids, we have manure. If you want healthy cows with the best reproductive performance, the lower cell count, the highest milk production, will be on sand. But we can reclaim the sand and use it over and over again. Proper stall care is critical. You know, when I go into free stall, the cows tell me, are they laying properly? We want at least 90% of the cows laying, so if they manure, they'll manure in the alley. Look at all those cows are laying perfectly. How about these cows? brand new free stall barn and they are almost unable to sell milk right now because their stalls are wrong. All the cows crap in the stall. How about these? How about those? And what happens? Free stalls aren't any good, are they? It has nothing to do with free stalls. It has how we design them and how the cow is positioned. A study, a two-year study on 4,400 cows, and look at the difference. There is an absolute linear relationship. If cows are properly positioned, we have low cell counts. If cows are not properly positioned, we have high cell counts. So if we're going to do it, let's do it right. You know, let's groom our free stalls. People just think, all I got to do is put sand and I'm done. No, if we groom them, we improve cow comforts worth one to two kilos of milk by grooming the stalls, keeping them level. Sand is comfort. If I have a choice, you'll put in sand. I've got lots of graphs I could show up areas that went from mattresses to solids to sand, and every step would show difference in cell count, difference in milk production. We know the difference between a mattress herd and sand herd is about three kilos. So if we don't have the cows milking well, it's hard to pay for a free stall barn. Recycled sand works well. There's some very simple systems here in Australia that are working extremely well. Like last night, remember I was telling you about this slope, so you can see we take the sand out. There's a steep slope there, so we get this water out, then the next day it moves up on the pile. It comes up here, and it's just a constant process. Looking at the milking machine, look at the rubber goods. Are the hoses cracked or soft? Are the short air tubes torn? What do the shutoff valves look like? And when I go to a dairy and the hoses are so old they're kinking like this, it affects milk out. <coughs> Had to do nothing with except we didn't take care of our systems. Make sure they're maintained. Worst thing you know, there is short air tubes, you know, that go between the shell and the cluster. When they have holes in them, they make your pulsators <coughs> malfunction. So making sure we maintain our equipment is so important. Here's a shutoff valve that's open, but the hose is still closed. 
that hose is so old it just can't open anymore. And the guy was complaining about milk outs. Well, they weren't milking out because the milk went full of food in. There are very few milking systems that won't benefit by shortening the hose. Does not have any negative impact and almost always creates faster milking. You know, look at this farm. The milk hose comes down all the way to the floor, comes all the way back up. That's a high line, not a low line. Whenever we lift milk, it drops vacuum. When we drop vacuum, we have slower <coughs> milking. You know, these dairies, look at this loop of milk. You wouldn't think it would make any difference with that little loop there. Make sure ACRs stay on longer, because as long as there's milk flowing through that ACR, and slugs especially, they'll stay on. 